et All right, good evening class and uh, welcome to our MI class. Welcome to our MI class. Okay, thank God we are two today as against yesterday when we are one. Thank you so much for joining the class today. Okay, so now we'll be looking at Absorption costing versus activity based costing. Okay, yesterday when we learned relevant costs, we talked about costs that are relevant and we mentioned variable costs and fixed costs. Today we'll be looking at a little about their behavior. We'll be looking about their behavior and we'll be seeing how we can use this behavior in kind of costing our products. Now, absorption costing and activity-based costing are two kinds of, uh, two classes of, two types of costing method that is based, that is using what they call full costing methods. So there are two costing methods, which is full costing and marginal costing. And so we are saying that absorption costing and activity-based costing, they use what they call full costing method. By full costing, we mean that the full cost of your product is being determined. First of all, before we talk about the full costing, let's look at variable costs and fixed costs. Variable costs are those costs that change with level of activity. Like yesterday we said, if you are making one loaf of bread, you have a particular cost. If your level of activity increased to 10, your cost, variable cost will increase according to the level of activity. We also said that they are avoidable costs. Okay, so if you remember from yesterday's class, avoidable costs are relevant costs. So variable costs are avoidable. We also said they are incremental in nature. But today we are going to add something to it. Most variable costs, many of them are direct costs. We are not saying all of them are direct costs, too. many of them are direct costs. And so, what do we mean by direct costs? Direct costs are those costs that are traceable directly to the final output. For example, when we are making loaf of bread, the materials in which we use in making the bread is a variable cost. We learned yesterday about relevant, relevant cost of direct material. And so that material can be traced to the finished product, bread. We also said that labor cost is also a variable cost. And so yesterday we learned about relevant cost of labor. So labor can be traced directly to the bread. If the bread is badly made, you will see it in the labor. If the bread was made by unskilled laborers, you will see it. All right. Now, when something is having a direct relationship with the final products, we call them direct costs. And the sum of all direct costs is usually called the prime cost. So what constitutes your cost of sales? What constitutes your cost of sales? The bulk part of it, the bulk part of it are variable in nature. So they are the direct material, 
the direct labor and the direct expenses. The direct expenses could be variable production overhead and fixed production overhead. But majority of what form the prime cost is variable cost. So mathematically, we can say your variable cost is equal to avoidable cost equals to your prime cost. Most of them are direct in nature. What about fixed costs? Fixed costs are those costs that remain unchanged. It doesn't respond with increasing level of activity. Example is rent of a bakery or a factory. Now these costs are unavoidable costs. Now in, 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 our, in our class MI, we are going to be calling them overheads. So indirect costs are overheads. It is also called period costs. So you see, we have two types of costs. One of them is product specific, product costs, direct costs. They are traceable to the products. The ones that are not traceable to the products, we call them period costs. They are traceable to the period in which the cost is incurred. Fixed cost behaves much, much, much like period costs. Okay? Now, we will say that our total cost is the sum total of your variable cost and your fixed cost. Okay, sometimes we can call your total cost, we can call it full cost. Is the sum total of your variable cost and your fixed cost. And there are two methods in which we can account for your full cost. And we say there are absorption costing, I call it AC method, then activity based costing which we call ABC, okay? So let's look at these two methods and see what we can get from them, okay? Now, absorption costing is one method of finding the full cost of a product, okay? Since this method is far older than the traditional, than the alternative method, which is the more modern method, we call absorption costing traditional method. We call it traditional method, okay? In absorption costing, since the direct costs are traceable to the final product, so sometimes when I call direct costs, it could be called product costs. So there is no problem when we are dealing with direct costs. So it means that our variable cost, which is material costs, and our labor costs that are directly traceable to the final product, there is no problem allocating it. Okay? Now, look at the diagram there. We have variable costs which we have direct material for bread, we have flour, we have butter. For direct labor, we have skilled and unskilled laborers. So we can trace it directly to the final product, which is your cake or your bread, okay? So you see the link there, direct allocation of costs. When we mean allocation of costs, we mean we push it to them. This is different from what we call apportionment. Apportionment means you, if somebody say apportion blame, if you want to apportion something, it means you share it. This part belongs to this, this part belongs to you, this part belongs to that. But when we say we allocate, we mean we push that thing to you. So it belongs to you. No sharing. So you see, variable costs 
are pushed directly to the final product. They are traceable to the final product. And so there is no problem at all when dealing with variable costs using absorption costing. Now the problem lies with the indirect costs, which we call the period costs. Take note, product cost is directly traceable. Period cost is not directly traceable. Now, it means that we must look for a way to link our period costs and convert them to product costs so that the product can absorb it and we can now use it to cost our product. So that is what we call absorption costing. Absorption costing means here absorbing all the costs, both product costs and period costs. There is no problem absorbing the product costs because they are directly traceable. The problem here is absorbing the period costs. Since we cannot link our rents, our depreciation, our lighting, our insurance to the final product. Now, what we need to do is to create what they call a halfway house. This halfway house is like a warehouse that houses the cost. When the warehouse takes the cost first, it now pushes it to the final product. So if you can look at the diagram below, look at your depreciation and your factory rent. Of course, there is no way you can push your factory rent to your product directly. It has to be done indirectly. So first of all, you push it halfway to a manager or a department. Then this manager, uh, this department will take these costs and since they are the ones working on the product, they cannot incur that rent and depreciation and push it from the manager or department to the final product. That is all what we do in absorbing indirect costs or the fixed costs. Now I wanted to look at something. This halfway house, this manager, or these departments, they have one characteristics. They are noun. A noun is a name of a person, cost manager, a place, a department or branch. So you see, they are nouns. All these nouns are the ones that first incur the period cost and then transfer the period cost to the product. And that is all what we do in absorption costing. I'll reiterate it now. In absorption costing, we divide the costs into two directly traceable, variable product costs. No problem. That is materials, labor, no problem. We talk about the period costs. Period costs that are not directly traceable to the product will first of all go through the halfway house to be absorbed. Then you now push it to the final product. And we say that halfway house is a noun. Now, if you look at some of the appropriate basis for apportionment, are uh, as given below. We have uh, for rent, we use the floor space to apportion it. For factory lighting, we use number of lighting facility and all that. All of these are as a measure of judgment of the person doing the apportionment, the appropriate apportionment. 
Now that is for apportionment. In a manufacturing process, we know that there are both production departments and there are service departments. So production departments are those departments that are dealing with producing the products. They are the ones directly involved in making the products. Why service departments will be servicing the production department? They don't come in contact with the products, but without the service department, the production department may not be able to function well. For example, if there are repairs that should be done to the production machine, it comes from the service department. But the repairer does not have anything to do with the products. But if the machine is not repaired, the production department cannot use it to produce. And so in the manufacturing process, we should have both production and service. So what do we do? We do what they call a three-step approach, which I call the three A's, which I call the three A's. What are the three A's? First, we apportion. When I say apportion, it means you push it straight to who it belongs. And so for you to be able to push something to who it belongs, you must use good judgment to know which appropriate measure of apportionment will you use to apportion, to apportion it. Okay, now you apportion it based on the appropriate, okay, when you say you apportion blame, you say, okay, you take more blame, you take part of the blame, you take part of the blame, all right? How do you use in measuring who takes more blame? You have your judgment in appropriate basis of apportionment. So in the same thing, you use that common sense judgment to say, okay, factory rent, instead of me to share it equally, let me share it according to floor space. They bring NEPA B. You say, okay, how will I share it? Should I share it equally or should I use the number of lighting points? Anyone you use is a matter of judgment. Now, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be apportioning all the period costs, both to the production department and the service department. So it means that you'll be apportioning them to all the departments as they fall due or as they seem fit. After doing all that, the second thing you have to do is to do a reapportionment. Now, what are you reapportioning? You are reapportioning the service department that has no business with the products. So service department has not incurred some costs from production which you want to transfer to the products there is no way service department can be linked to the products all they need to be do all they need is service department service production department so you link the service department cost push it into production cost you reallocate the service department and close it into the production production department using the ratio of the total cost incurred by all departments. After you've made service department cost to be zero, it means production departments will now have increased costs allocated to them. The next thing we do is we absorb. Absorption here means pushing it to the halfway house then the halfway house will now take it in and push it to the product. So that part where we are pushing it from the halfway house to the product is called absorption. In, over, in absorption costing, there is only one way we push the cost from all the departments because the departments are the halfway house, right? The departments are the halfway house, I told you about, or the manager. So there is only one way we 
push it from this halfway house to the product. And that is by using what they call overhead absorption rate. So the thing is this, whenever you think of absorption costing, two things should come to your mind. One, you should be thinking about halfway house being noun. Second thing is, you'll be thinking of overhead absorption rates. And when you think about overhead absorption rates, you think of labor hours. So overhead absorption rate is, you are looking for one particular rate that you can use to charge all the departments. So how do you find the rates? You use a formula. The formula is overhead absorption rate is your total estimated overhead or period cost divided by the budgeted level of activity. Now, the budgeted level of activity here is labor hours. So labor hours is the only thing we use in determining our overhead absorption rate. So it then means that if we have um, 1 million Naira as our period cost, and we have 100,000 hours for that month or for that year as production hours, all we need to do is 1 million Naira divided by 100,000 hours. 10, 10 naira per labor hours. It means each department, you'll be charging them 10 naira for each hour that is spent in that department. And so maybe you have three production departments. One of them spent X, Y, Z hours. The other one spent X, Y, Z hours. You'll be saying, how many hours do you spend in this department? Multiply it by 10 naira. That is the cost that is allocated to that department. And so that is how it is being pushed from the department to the product. We use what they call overhead absorption rate. Now there is what they call over absorption and under absorption. What is over absorption? Overabsorption is a situation whereby your expected overhead cost is greater than the actual cost incurred. This is the way I like to look at it. Let's say, for example, you plan to you plan to buy flour for making bread. You budgeted that 50 kg of flour will cost you 50,000 naira. That means that's your budgeted cost. You have absorbed it already in your production process, in your budget. You now go to the market and you now see that you can buy it for 49,000 Naira. It means you budgeted more than what you actually paid. So because you budgeted more than what you actually paid, you have over budgeted you have over absorbed and that is also what is called over recovery it means expected cost is higher than actual cost you have a positive figure you have over absorbed it means in layman language you went to the market and brought back change. Now, what is under absorption? Under absorption is the opposite, whereby your expected overhead cost is less than actual. You had a mine 50,000 kg, 50,000 naira. You went to the market and they told you, ah, market, don't put money. You have to buy 52,000. And you start looking for where will I get 2,000 naira? So instead of bringing back change, you are even owing people that, okay, I will pay you 2,000 later. 
or you borrow the 2000 to pay. So you see, it results to a, to, to, to a negative figure. It means also that um, you under budgeted. You took something that is not up to what is in the market. Under budget, under recovery, under absorption. Okay, so uh, let's look at example one. Example one here, let's look at this together. BROT company is preparing its production overhead budgets and determining the apportionment of these overheads to products. Cost centers, expenses, and related information have been budgeted. Now, if you look at this, you can see the total of all the all the costs here. We can see some direct costs, and we can see some uh, indirect costs. Indirect wage, okay, all right. All of them here are indirect costs anyway. All of them are indirect costs because it cannot be traced to the final product. Indirect wages cannot be traced. Consumable materials too cannot be traced. Rent and rates cannot be traced. But if you look at it very well, your indirect wages has been directly allocated to all departments. So also is the consumable materials have been allocated to almost all departments. Maintainers do not have consumable materials. Now, if you look at rents and rates, building insurance, power, head, heat and lighting, and depreciation of machinery, it has not been allocated. So that means we need to apportion. So what we want to do, we want to do that three-step thing. First of all, we apportion. Secondly, we reapportion. And thirdly, we absorb. Now, we see value of machine power usage down to area square feet. All these are your basis of apportionment. Choose whatever you think is appropriate. You choose whatever you think is appropriate and you use it as your basis for apportionment. Required, using the direct apportionment to production department method, that's one, and basis of apportionment which you consider most appropriate, calculate overhead totals for the three department for the three production departments. I need to underline production department. Now, how many production department? They said three. It means machine A, machine B, and assembly department are the production department. Canteen and maintenance are service department. And so what it means here they're telling you is this. Apportion to all five departments. Reapportion the other two departments and close them into the three departments. Give us the total for the three departments. Let's look at that A part, first of all. Let's look at the A part. Okay, so let's go to the solution. Let's get down to business of the solution. All right. Now look at the solution here with you. So this is what we do. Remember in the question, 
this indirect wages has already been allocated. That is what we mean by direct apportionment to production department. It has been directly apportioned. And so we look at this cost element, basis for apportionment, we say direct allocation, and we just copy and paste. The second one too is another copy and paste because it has been directly apportioned. We do the copy and paste. Okay. Now what about the third one? The third one here is rent and rates. And so we say our rent and rates is area square feet. So we go back to area square feet. This is area square feet. So what do we do? All right, if you have your calculator with you there, join me in doing this. You want to allocate machine A. How many of these rent and rates should we allocate or should we apportion to machine A using the area floor space? The logic is this if machine A occupies 10,000 square meter out of the total of 45. So you say 10,000 divided by 45,000 multiplied by this 16,700 that they want to share. That's multiplied by 16,700. That will give you 3,000 711 3711 and that is how we got our 3711 here if you want to do for the second one which is machine b all you need to do is look at the floor space for machine b 12000 divided by the total floor space 45,000 multiplied by this 16,700 they are looking for times 16,700. That gives you 4,453. 4,453. That's how it's been done. So using that same method, you use it to do assembly, canteen, and maintenance okay now going to building and insurance all you need to do is to look for the appropriate measure we said square area the same process you did in rent and rates you apply it in building and you get your figures now power the basis of apportionment is power usage in percentage, so look at them, power usage in percentage. This is 100, so you say 55 over 100, of course that is 55%, multiplied by 8,600. So you are saying 55% of 8,600 should go for machine A. The same thing you do for heat and lighting, use the power usage, then depreciation of machinery. You use your value of machine. And that's how you use in getting all of these. Some of them have zero because in their basis of apportionment, they were zero. All right? Now that we've done that, you look for your subtotal. Now, your subtotal is when you total from this indirect wage down to depreciation of machine. That is what you have here. Indirect wages down to depreciation of machine. Add them together, you're having 166,760. You also add the other columns together you are getting their figures the important thing is if you sum 
machine A, machine B assembly. If you sum up that up down to maintenance, it should give you this 16,760, which is your total. Now, what do you do? This is what we call allocation or apportionment. The next thing you do is reapportion. So which of these two are you going to reapportion? Because you're going to do them one after the other. You reapportion uh, the canteen first because all the machine, A and machine B and assembly, they need the canteen. Even the maintenance need to go to canteen. And so cost of the cost incurred in the canteen is the first to go. So how do we do it? Can you see that this is 32797 in positive? When we are going to reallocate it, it means we are putting it as negative. We want to share this cost into all other departments. How do we do it? We use the total cost as a basis. And so what we do for machine A is you look for the total. It's not this total you are going to use, this 16,166,760. No, you're not going to use that total. You are going to find a new total. You add this to this and to this, and then you add this last one. Of course, you are not adding canteen anymore. So that's why you're not using the 166. In fact, what you'll be doing is to say 166, 760 minus canteen that should not be part of it, 32797. 32797. It means your new total is 133,963. 133,963. Now, how do you reallocate machine? You will say 11,245, 11,245 divided by 133,696. When you divide it, multiply it by this cost of canteen you want to reapportion 32797 and hula what you have here is 16650 okay hold on i've made a little mistake in my own calculation 166760 Minus thirty-two seven nine seven one thirty-three nine six three. So what I will do is forty-five nine thirty divided by one thirty-three nine six three multiply by the thirty-two thousand seven nine seven. That will give me 11,245. So you see, this 11,245 is as a result of reallocating this. The same vein, you reallocate to machine B, 45,683 divided by, let's do it, 45,683 divided by 133693 multiply by 32797 and here you have it 11184 that is how you do for the rest so you have it know that if you add this 11,265 plus this 11,184 plus this 6,317 plus this 4,051, add them together, should give you this 32,979. 
and you find out that you see your total cost here is zero because your total cost will not increase when you are reallocating. Your total cost is just there, but you are reallocating costs. Now that way, you get your new total. Your new subtotal still remains 166, 760, but now machine A has increased in value. Machine B has increased, assembly has increased, and cantina, maintenance has increased. But you see, canteen, canteen has become zero. That's fine. The next thing to do is to reallocate your maintenance the way we did uh, canteen. So what you do, you will, you will add all these three together, this plus this plus this. It's still equivalent to saying 166, 760, Minus that can maintenance you don't want twenty six hundred. That means the total is one forty six one o six. How do you allocate that of machine A? You will say fifty seven one seventy five divided by one sixty one sixty what one sixty four. 160 multiplied by how much? 20,600. Okay, you are getting your 8,058. Okay, that's good. 8,058. You do the same thing for others and you add them up again. That way, you have removed canteen and you have removed maintenance and everything is going to the three departments as required in your, in your question. Okay, so that is how you do your question number A. Excuse me? In question number B, you were asked to determine the budgeted overhead absorption rate for each of the production department using appropriate basis of absorption. The appropriate basis of absorption is the overhead absorption rate using labor hours. So what do we do? Overhead absorption rate is what we are looking for. Total estimated overhead costs all over budgeted level of activity. So our overhead cost is this 166,760, which is our numerator here. And our denominator is 35,000 hours. Where did we get that? Look at direct labor hours. Total is 35,000 hours. So when you divide, you have excuse me, you have four four naira seventy six kobo. It means the rate of direct labor for each department you are charging four naira seventy six kobo. That is your overhead absorption rate. That is what they are asking you. Determine the budgeted overhead absorption rate. That is what you just calculate. The third one is the total production overhead expenditure of the company was 176.533. Now, this was the actual, the actual expenditure. And now the actual activity was as follows. In direct labor hours, this is the direct total direct labor hours for machine A, for machine B, and for assembly. Now, this is the machine usage hours for these two. Okay, now we are told to calculate the under or over absorption. Oh. 
I'm so tired. Sorry. Under or over absorption of the overheads. How can you get the under or over absorption? The first thing to do is to look for your expected overhead. After doing that, you look for your actual overhead and minus it. The difference will tell you whether you are over or under absorbing. So what do we do? How do we get our expected? The first thing is to use this overhead absorption rate you've calculated to multiply your labor hours for each department. So what you do that, this rate does not change. It's determined by production in advance. So we've done it in advance. It is this production hours, labor hours that will change. Now look at the actual labor hours. It is not this budgeted labor hours that we're going to use. We are going to use the actual labor hours. What I'm saying is, if given these actual hours, how much are we supposed to charge them? We're supposed to charge them 4 naira 76 kobo each hour. So when you multiply this rate by the number of hours, you now have a new total of 39,032 for machine A. Machine B has its own and all that. So when you total all of them, you're expected, which you are expected to go to the market with, or to the labor market with, is 174,216. But the question says you actually spent 176,533. That means you spent more than what you budgeted. Now, it means you have underabsorbed. It means you absorb something, you absorb something less than what you actually incurred. Okay, so that's the that's that. So I will give you like two or three minutes break and we'll come to the activity based costing method. So two or three minutes break, we'll come back. Okay, we are back. We go to the activity based costing. Now this is the alternative method of doing full costing. The first one we've just seen before is the absorption costing, which we call the traditional costing method. And we said two things about it. We said we have a halfway house, which is a noun. And we talk about overhead absorption rates, which is based on labor hours. These are the things you need to know. Now in ABC, it relies on common, um, it relies on more modern method that accurately measures costs based on activities. And so there are activity drivers, which is called cost drivers that drives activity. The logic behind it is this. If there is no activity, no cost will be incurred. Now, let's look at an example. Look at FCA teaching you. The fact that FCA has a skills department or foundation department, okay? That in itself, should not be a reason to incur costs. That is what ABC is saying. The only reason why we will incur costs is when FCA has a teacher that teaches, and so it has incurred costs, all right? So cost is incurred when activities are done, 
practice. So that is why it is called activity-based costing. Now, when we are doing absorption costing, we use a b. Uh, we use absorption overhead absorption rates. But when we are using cost driver, we will change that notion to call it cost driver rates. The formula is the same. Cost driver rate is total cost for each activity divided by the total level of activity for that activity. Now the difference between this and what we had in absorption costing is absorption costing, you will just have one overhead absorption rate. But in ABC, you have several cost driver rates but it will be the number of cost drivers. So if you have um, five activities driving costs, then you have five cost driver rates. If you have two activities, then be prepared to have two cost drivers. Now, the similarity between the absorption costing and ABC is how they treat of um, direct costs. You see the same diagram here is the same way we treat overhead um, absorption costing. So you see they are directly allocated to the final product. No stress. All right. But now the difference comes to how we allocate the indirect costs the period cost. How do we push it to the final product? Once again, we have a halfway house, just like absorption costing. But the difference is what things make up the halfway house. In absorption costing, we say a noun. In ABC, we'll say a verb. A verb is an activity word. A verb is an action word. Activity requires a verb. And you are doing activity based costing, you need a verb. Okay? So when you think of ABC, think of activities, think of verbs, think of cost driver rates. Now let's look at an example here that will help us to buttress our point. Downfall company makes and sell two products. These two products are X and Y. Now look at the data for the production and sales each month. For product X and product Y, look at their sales demand. Look at the direct material cost per unit, look at the direct labor hours per unit, and the direct labor cost per unit. Okay? Production overheads are 500,000 each month. So you see production overheads. So what we had here before, this table relates to direct costs. Now, this one relates to the production overhead in direct costs. Analysis of the overhead cost, this 500, this is the analysis here. So, you can you see this is the total of 500 here given to us? Look at how it is being analyzed. There's what they call batch setup, order handling, machining, and quality control. And you see it. The cost driver is, these are the things that drives the cost. That's fine. Now you are required to calculate full production costs for product X and Y. When we say full production cost, it means calculate both the direct costs and the indirect costs. Add them together to get your full production cost. How do we solve this problem? How do we solve this problem? OK. 
Okay, so this is our question. How do we solve this problem? Let's get to the solution. I look at the solution for you here. Let me explain the solution for you. Okay? Your sales demand in units are being given to you. 4,000, 8,000. They are being given to you. Fine. That is it here. These two here. The next thing to do is to look for your direct costs. We have your direct material costs by unit. It was given to you 20 naira, 10 naira. So that's what we did. So we said total material cost is just to multiply 4,000 by 20 will give you 80,000. Yeah, 8,000 multiplied by 10 will give you 80,000. If you add them together, it will give you 160. That's fine. Now your direct labor cost, we were told it is two naira per unit, four naira per unit. These are the things we did. So the labor cost, we are going to be multiplying this sales, 4,000 multiplied by two, will give you 8,000. Here, 8,000 multiplied by four, will give you 32,000. You add them together, you get 40,000. That's beautiful. Now, when you add your, when you add your direct material and direct labor, you get 88,000. 88,000 is your prime cost. Of course, when you do the same thing, for product Y, you get 112. And when you add them up together, you have 200,000 total as your prime cost. Then you have your overheads. Overheads. Now we are told to see workings. Now this is where the marks are. Now we, look, we need to look for what they call overhead absorption rates before we can apportion the overheads. Now, how do we get the overhead apportion absorption rate? Yeah, says, excuse me, 500,000 is the total production, uh, uh, production amount. 500,000 it is divided by your level of activity. Level of activity here must be labor hours. And so what it means here is this. One, 0 0.1 hours for one unit multiplied by how many number of hours? Okay, sorry. 0 0.1 times 4,000. Look at it, 0 times 1 times 4,000. That means it takes you 0 0.1 hours to make one unit of goods. Multiply by 4,000. That will give you 400 hours. 0 0.2 per hour multiplied by 8,000 will give you uh, 1,600. So 1,600 plus 400 hours will give you 2,000 hours. So what you do here, 500,000 divided by 2,000 hours. That will give you 250 Naira per direct labor hours. So what do you do? After getting your 250 Naira per per direct labor hours. You go back to that, your direct labor hours, and you say 250 Naira per hour, multiplied by, in this department, how many hours was worked? Because this is 4,000. So 250,000, 250 Naira, 
multiplied by 400 will give you 100,000. That's how we got the 100,000 sitting down here. 250 Naira multiplied by 1,600. That's how we got the 400 sitting down here. So if you check them together, add them up, gives you 500. We have 500 to 200 gives you 700. So of course, this full cost here means 88,000 plus 100 will give you 188. 112 plus 400 gives you 512. And that's how you get the total cost of your product. If you have more questions about that, please ask me in the group chat. Now, we are told to also use activity-based costing. How do you use activity-based costing? Now, let's look at activity-based costing solution. Now, the activity-based costing is similar. We have your sales unit which we got from here. Sales unit is intact. The next thing we are told to do is to bring our prime costs. These are our prime costs. is the same way we treated it in absorption costs. It's only trying to do it again. So it is this 88,000 that we got before is what we are now using. You look at it well if you add them up 88 plus 12 gives you 200,000. That's beautiful. Workings for overhead. How did we get, how did we apportion the 500 to each department? So, this is what we will do. First, you need to set up their overhead absorption rates. So that's what we did here. For batch setup, why do we need batch setup? Batch setup is the activity. And we said batch setup is 10,000 Naira. And what is the cost driver for batch setup? Okay, number of setup. So it means 20, 10, and 10. These are the number of setups you did. Okay, 10 and 10 gives you this 20. So it means 20 is the total number of setup. 100,000 is the total number of batch setup. To get the rate, simply say 100,000 divided by 20. And it gives you 5,000 Naira. That is how you'll be doing for all of them. Do the ones that have their cost driver, look at the cost driver rate. Like second one is three, 200 divided by 40. We still give you 5,000. So that is 5,000 twice. So what do you need to do? After getting your overhead absorption rate for each driver, you put it down here. Now try to get the allocation for X and Y. And I told you how do you allocate for X and Y? It's simple. It's simple. After getting this 5,000 Naira as your rate, you put it here in your CDR, your rates. So what do you do? It means 5,000 Naira for one rate. And you look at your batch setup. There are 20, 10 from one side, 10 from the other side. As you can see from the question here, 10 and 10. So how do you resolve it? 5,000 multiplied by 10, Will give you 50,000. 5,000 multiplied by another 10 will give you 50,000. 
Because if you add them together, you're having your 100,000, which is a bone of contention. 100,000 is your 100,000 is your batch setup cost. We'll go for other handling. You will say 200,000 divided by 40. 40 is as a result of 24 and 16. So if you look at my solution, you still have 5,000. So you're going to use this 5,000 as a multiplication for all the activities done there. So what do you do? You simply say 5,000 multiplied by 24. Let me use my calculator. 5,000 multiplied by 24 gives me 120,000. So that's how I got this 120 here. So similarly, 5,000 multiplied by 16. 5,000 multiplied by 16 gives you 80,000. That's how you get it. So you do the same similar thing. You look for the overhead um, cost driver rate. You multiply. Okay, of course, this is the eight you've gotten, which you put here. Your cost driver rate was eight. Take it to this table. Eight multiplied by how many? Sorry. Eight. Eight naira mach other machine multiplied by six thousand, which is the number of machine. So let's see what we got. Six thousand divided times multiplied by eight. Six thousand multiplied by eight will give you forty-eight thousand, and that's how we got our forty-eight thousand. We can also do the second one. Eight multiplied by how many? Nine thousand. That's how we got our seventy-two thousand which you got here, 72,000. When you add these two together, you should be able to give you this total. So when you do for all of them, you find the total cost, 263, 237. So you take it back to the question. Where is it again? 263, 237. So conveniently, you have a portion the 500 just like this. So you see, if we are to look at absorption costing, the overheads, product X has 100, product X has 263. Product Y has 237 here. Product Y has 400. So there's going to be a difference in how they look at overhead. But the thing is, the company is making 500,000 Naira as overhead in absorption. It's also making 500,000 as overhead in activity-based costing. So you see the total does not matter. What matters from our relevant costing, the total does not matter. But the individual product matters. As here was 263 and here is 237, compare it to 100 and 400. So you see the method for activity-based costing different from absorption costing. Summary of today's lecture. We've seen absorption costing as a traditional method of dealing with overheads, which involves three stages. I call them the three A's. Allocation, apportionment, and absorption. After allocation is done, 
for the affected department. That means you have allocated, you have reallocated, and you find out that no service department is taking up anything. You now apportion the costs using a suitable overhead absorption basis. After getting your basis for absorption, you now find it to get your absorption, overhead absorption rate. So that is a predetermined cost, which is used to plan your activity. Okay, we saw under or over absorption. We saw that on over absorption is when you budgeted too much than what you actually incur. Under absorption is when you incur much more than what you budgeted. We now saw how to deal with cost driver rates for ABC, unlike the overhead absorption that just uses labor hours. Your CDRO, as many as activities that are done in that month, you will get their cost driver rates. Okay, we also saw ABC as a modern method, absorption, met absorption costing, we said absorption costing requires halfway house that are now in nature and overhead absorption rates. ABC requires halfway house that are verb in nature and we need cost driver rates. So these are the things you need to know in this today's class. How to deal with overhead absorption, get the rates, and absorb it into the product using the OAR. Why the ABC, you need to get several cost driver rates and integrate them into the product. Thank you very much for this class. Okay, today's class is not that big. Thank you so much. I wanted to practice these two assignments, these two class work, not assignments, and get to the past question papers over the years to see some of these activity-based costing and, and, and uh, absorption costing, and see if you can attempt them. If you can attempt them and use this method I've taught you to see if you can do them. If you cannot do them, please call my attention Refer to the refer to the question um, past question diet and the question number and proceed with your question. So this is the summary for today. Um, I beg to take my leave and end the class for now. Any question, see me on the WhatsApp group. Thank you so much. And we'll see you in the next class. Have a nice day.